Hello, my name is Dave Lee Travis, and welcome to another edition of the Top 10 Auto Show. This week's category is the large family car, the kinds of vehicles that give you a bit of prestige and comfort that smaller cars just can't offer. The judges for this week's programme are the same as the rest of the series, our expert panel comprising of editors from the UK's top motoring magazines. They looked at all the cars in great detail and scored them in the categories of practicality, style, performance, handling and ride. And of course, finally, value. So let's lift the curtain and reveal what is at number 10 in our chart in the countdown to the all-important number one car and the presentation ceremony at the end of the programme. At number 10 in our chart this week, it's a car which has dropped from last year's position of number 5 in this category, and no wonder. The Peugeot 406 has done very well over the last five years of its life on this earth, but it's starting to show its age now. After two facelifts, it really can't compete with the top runners in this category, although that's not saying it's a bad car. The 406 is still a fairly refined machine, and Peugeot's acclaimed diesels still are class leading. If you don't mind the poorer quality and image that the 406 will project, then you'll be walking into a Peugeot showroom with a spring in your step and a smile on your face, knowing that you're very likely to get an extremely good deal on an outgoing car. So overall, the Peugeot 406 will appeal to you if image isn't really an issue. It's a large family car which does its job and that's it. Before we take a look at these scores in detail, here are some specifications about the Peugeot 406. If this car has been voted number 10 in our chart, then there are nine better cars in our panel's opinion, so stay tuned. So, the Peugeot 406 gets 55%, making it number 10 in this year's top 10 of large family cars. At number 9, another car that's been around a while and can be categorised in many respects similarly to the Peugeot 406. This is the Toyota Avensis, the spacious, well-built, large family car that comes out very well in reliability surveys with customers. You'll certainly save money on running costs, and again, the amount of equipment you get is very generous for the money you pay. What you also get for your money is the latest in engine technology from Toyota. And the VVTII, on offer in both 1.8 and 2-litre guys, are willing, refined and frugal. On the road, the Toyota Avensis is perfectly capable as a motorway cruiser, although it could be a little quieter inside the cabin. Where the cracks in the plaster really begin to show up is when you're trying to navigate around the curvy country roads. It's certainly not unsafe to drive, it's just that if you enjoy your driving and need to be fully aware of what the car is doing, you're likely to be disappointed having to be stuck behind the wheel of the Toyota Avensis all day. So, let's take a look at the options and technical specifications of the Toyota Avensis. So now let's see how our panel of experts mark the car in our top 10 auto show categories. The Toyota Avensis drops from last year's number 7 to this year's number 9 position in our top 10. In this position we discover a new entry, the brand new Citroen C5. This is a car which replaces the aging Citroen Xantia, but seems to have gone on an eating binge. The C5 is simply massive. 
It looks a very wide car, but maybe that's just in the styling because it's only 5.7 inches wider than the old Xantia. It gives the passengers inside an awful lot of room. We're talking about limousine space in there. You almost get the ride of a limousine as well, as the Citroen smooth riding suspension system is one of the most advanced around. The C5 is excellent for really long journeys when it comes to interior comfort, and the soft ride will please many people. It's not exactly a driver's car, the handling is controlled, but really the whole system lacks sufficient feedback to satisfy really keen drivers. The look of the Citroen 5 is not to everybody's taste either. When it was first unveiled to the waiting crowds of motoring journalists, there were incredibly negative comments about the blandness of the metalwork and of the huge Citroen badge on the front. There were jokes that the purpose of the huge shiny badge was to blind the oncoming drivers of rival cars on a sunny day, but it's more likely that it simply had to be in proportion with the rest of this massive car. So let's take a look at the technical specifications. Well, now let's see how our expert panel have marked the Citroen C5. Our expert panel have given marks in all the various categories and these have been averaged out to put the C5 straight in our chart at number 8. At number 7 in the top 10 of large family cars, the Vauxhall Vectra. The Vectra has been a big success story for Vauxhall cars, but maybe it could have been a bigger success story if it hadn't been for various knocking campaigns by various high-profile journalists who seem not to like the Vectra for the sake of it. However, the latest version of the Vauxhall Vectra takes many design cues from General Motors' concepts of recent years. The huge headlights and the bold V-grille set off the square lines of the new Vectra, and the back end makes a statement. The rear doesn't shock, like maybe the BMW 7 Series shocks, but the wide chrome strip is needed to break up the lines on what could be a pretty ugly rear end. The reason why it's so slab-sided at the back is, of course, because many customers said the Vectra's old boot simply wasn't big enough. Now, never mind a set of golf clubs, you could get the members of the golf club in here and have a party. The new Vauxhall Vectra is amazing in the cabin. The quality and reliability of the materials are almost up to German standards. In fact, one of the Vectra's designers came from Audi, and it really does show. The Vectra is a revelation, and if you haven't driven the new incarnation, forget your prejudices and get behind the wheel. So, let's take a look at the technical specifications of the all-new Vauxhall Vectra. So, let's see how the expert panel have rated the Vauxhall Vectra. The judges have done their marking and we have averaged their scores and that leaves the Vauxhall Vectra with 67% at number 7 in our top 10. At number 6, up from last year's number 8 position, we find the Nissan Primera. This is a car which started life truly targeted as a driver's machine. This is the latest version. It's all new. And like the Vauxhall Vectra, you really need to forget about any old experiences you've had with the old model and really check this out. The Primera's cabin can take a little getting used to. The switch gear is all in the right position for driving, but all the other controls for the vents and the radio seem to be spread out on a weird sort of jukebox or clock radio type affair, which some feel looks a little cheap. But this is just a niggle, because the total package is really excellent. On the road, the refinements are really noticeable. There's quite a bit of wind noise, but the noise from the road and from the engine seem to have been filtered out. We don't know if this has been done by technology or by magic, but who cares, as long as you get a quiet ride. But if you're a real driver, you want to know how the Nissan handles on the open road. 
the all-new front suspension helps the Nissan handle bends with ease. It's a little unsettled at low speed, but it makes up for this with its excellent road manners when the speed is on. So, let's take a look at the technical specifications of the all-new Nissan Primera. So now let's see how our panel of experts mark the car in our top 10 auto show categories. The Nissan Primera at number 6 in this year's chart with an overall score of 68%. At number five, it's a new entry. Here's another car you often see driving around town with taxi plates on it, and this is always a good sign. If you were a taxi driver, you'd want a comfortable and above all reliable car for your work, and the Skoda Octavia offers this in spades. This is an incredibly good value car, as long as you don't mind the shame of driving around with a Skoda badge on the front and the back. Now, maybe shame is too strong a word, but you have to admit that in the car world, badge snobbery is still a very potent force. Now, the jokes may be behind us, but Skoda is unfortunately still not a prestige badge. If you can live with this, then take advantage of the build quality that the Volkswagen Group offers in this incredibly good value package. You'll get an excellent warranty, low running costs, and if you're going to keep it for a long time, it makes very sound financial sense. When you're driving this car, you feel safe, and you get a decent controlled ride as well. The passengers get plenty of space, and the boot is really huge. So check out the Octavia for budget family motoring. Let's take a look at the technical specifications for this car now. So now let's see how our panel of experts mark the car in our top 10 auto show categories. We're getting closer to the number one position now. Have you guessed what it'll be? Well, stay tuned as we run down the top four and we'll discover what is the number one car in our chart this year. Hello and welcome back to the Top 10 Auto Show with this week's category, Large Family Cars. Down from last year's number two position to this year's number four, the car which rewrote the quality rules for this class of vehicle, the Volkswagen Passat. You'll never have exactly fun driving the Passat, even with the sports suspension. It's not that kind of car and was never meant to be. When was the last time you saw a touring car in a hot custom job that was a Volkswagen Passat? However, this is a car for long-distance cruising, the job it does with a plum. The Volkswagen Passat is amazingly well-built and well-insulated against any noise. What's more, it's also built for long-term ownership as well as a trouble-free life. You'll get a three-year warranty with this machine, but the reason they do it is because they're pretty certain you're never going to need it. Well, now let's take a look at the specifications. So, let's see how the expert panel have rated the Volkswagen Passat in the five top ten categories. The Volkswagen Passat at number four in our chart of the top ten large family cars. Well, we're into the top three now, and at number three, it's last year's number one machine, the Ford Mondeo. Here is the car 
which has set the benchmark for the rest of the vehicles in this group. Ford have done a really amazing job with the Mondeo. They haven't rested on their laurels and they've listened, really listened to what their customers wanted. The latest version is bigger, safer and better equipped. What's more, the extra size and weight haven't brought any disappointment when it comes to road manners. The new Mondeo is a big car but doesn't really feel it because the steering is very pert and you feel very much in control of what the machine is doing. Now Ford were really taken aback when VW's Passat stole a march on the quality of trim and build. They fought back with all the things that Volkswagen have offered and the quality of materials is absolutely first class now. So well done to Ford for improving still further their flagship family car, the all new Ford Mondeo. Let's take a look at the figures. So now let's see how our panel of experts mark the car in our top 10 auto show categories. So the Ford Mondeo in a very close top 3 at number 3. The number 2 vehicle in our top 10 of large family cars comes from France. Up from last year's number three, the Renault Laguna has found many new fans who've enjoyed the vehicle, which is rather different from the rest. The Laguna can make an excellent family or a company fleet car. The space inside is decent, although not tremendous, and you'll get a comfortable ride with plenty of refinement. You'll have to work the engines quite hard to get on, but the engine noise seems to be rather well damped. As a driver, you won't really enjoy the experience as much as you would, say, the Primera, but the ride is very smooth at the expense of crisp handling. The old Laguna has a pretty good reputation for reliability, and the new one is determined to take this to a higher level. So, if you've always thought the French vehicles couldn't really hack it in the mainstream market, the new Renault Laguna will really prove you wrong. Of course, residual values are always going to be a problem, but if you know you're going to own the car for at least three years and look after it, you shouldn't have any worries. You'll know you'll have a good, well-appointed large family car that's a little bit different from the rest of the crowd. The Renault Laguna. Let's check out those figures. Well, now let's see how our expert panel have marked the Renault Laguna. So, before we have a look at the number one car, which may be a bit of a surprise for you, let's run down the rest of the chart. At number 10, it's the aging Peugeot 406. It's the British-built Toyota Avensis at number 9, a perky car with much to offer. At number 8, it's the huge Citroen C5. At number 7, the new Vauxhall Vectra, which is a huge leap forward for the car. The Nissan Primera is motoring ahead at number 6, while the Czechoslovakian Skoda Octavia nips ahead of it at number 5. The Volkswagen Passat takes our number 4 slot, while the ever-popular Ford Mondeo takes the number 3 prize. The new Renault Laguna makes it at number two, so that begs the question, what is left? And here it is. And ten points to you if you guessed correctly. The all-new Mazda 6 is our number one car in this week's chart. The Mazda 6 is a real breakthrough for the company. This is a car with a real sporty presence, with a price tag that you need to double-check to make sure it isn't a misprint. As I mentioned before, car company designers move around. Plus, when they're designing a new car, quite often they have an existing successful car in mind from a rival company. Mazda say that they've tried to keep the BMW 3 Series in mind when they were looking at the ride and handling of this car. And this seems to have worked. This car really can be fun to drive. 
They must have realised that the rest of the sector in the family car world are very capable machines, but not many of them really appeal to the driver, which is daft, really. The person who has had a family suddenly doesn't lose their enjoyment of thrashing a car around the bends, so why should the bigger cars they're forced to buy take this pleasure away from them? Of course, there are compromises. This isn't a perfect car, but the Mazda 6 makes this an extremely attractive package with high levels of standard equipment and plenty of room for passengers. Before the award ceremony, let's take a look at the technical specifications for the all-new Mazda 6. Well, now let's see how our expert panel have marked the all-new Mazda 6. With four models in the range, this really is a big threat to the main players, and congratulations to Mazda for getting to number one in our top ten this year. Hi, this is Gary Shufield, Director of Programming for Granada Mena Motors. I'm here with James Muir, the Managing Director of Mazda, and they have won this wonderful award for Mazda 6, which is the top large family car beating all other competitors out of sight. James, this is for you. Thank you very much. And how do you feel about this award? Absolutely delighted. I mean, this is the, uh, this is the first year of a, a brand new car for us, a very important uh, car for us. Uh, it's been very, very well received in the marketplace and absolutely thrilled that you've uh, given us uh, an award that we believe the car thoroughly deserves. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Fantastic. So, well done to Mazda, and thanks to all the manufacturers for the cooperation in the making of this program. And if with our help you decide what will be your next car, all the better. Do join us next week when we'll be running down the top 10 MPVs. This is Dave Lee Travis saying, do drive with care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.